Testing one, two, good morning from Hamburg in North Germany. This video is about 10 different compositions for architecture and urban photography. We've got examples from right here in the field and it all starts right now. Let's go. and good morning from my parking garage in Hamburg. This is a location that maybe a few of you have seen before. It's a great spot for our first composition tip. And this photo actually covers the first three uh, compositions that I wanna share with you in this video, as well as one more that we'll cover later on. So you'll notice that a lot of these uh, compositions can kind of cross over between one or the other of the, of the said kind of guidelines or rules for uh, what we're gonna talk about in this video. And I personally think that that's a really good thing to look for in your own urban and uh, architecture photography if you can kind of hit a number of these different points all in one photo then uh, then you're off to uh, to probably an awesome result so here you've got a very classic uh, shot that's straight up and the tip here is to shoot wide because that what you're looking at right there above me is at 20 mil i'm filming on the 20 mil 1.8 sony lens and uh, in my opinion it's not wide enough at 20 mil it still looks cool but really you want to be shooting architecture and urban photography as wide as you can go so i've bought the 12 to 24 from sony tilt shift lenses are really really good for interiors architecture and uh, urban photography but also a 16 to 35 is a really good lens to have i own one for landscapes mostly but i've been using it a lot for architecture over the last couple of years so i know a lot of you probably already have have a 16 to 35 or something around that focal length, use that one if you've got it, because that is uh, the first tip in this video, shoot wide. And we are in the elevator going up, up, up to the second location here. And uh, this is an amazing, amazing staircase. You're gonna love this spot, check this out. We are here at our second location of this video and uh, we're at the top of a staircase in a building right at the very top floor and we've got a beautiful scene just below us here. This is a, a top-down composition of this staircase and it is a good example of the second tip that I want to share with you here which is a one-point perspective composition. Now you may have heard of this before um, and you've definitely seen it multiple multiple times in your life but a one-point perspective is where you have like one central point where everything is leading the eye towards that spot and it tends to be a vanishing point on the horizon. So a very good example of this is a tunnel or a road that just goes off into the distance or buildings and architecture staircases are a really good example of a one point perspective. And I personally like to try and put that point right in the middle of the composition. So a really good example was actually the first photo in, in this video. That is a great one point perspective and also this staircase looking down. Very, very nice. We're back outside and our next tip is to use leading lines to guide your one point perspective. And I think uh, in retrospect in this video, looking at that first photo is a better example from the parking garage of using those leading lines to guide your one point perspective right in the middle of the frame. Now the staircase is also pretty good when you've got the uh, sort of half spiral thing going on with the uh, railings. They also lead towards the uh, one point perspective, but it's interesting when you look at a one point perspective especially, there tends to be natural leading lines going towards the uh, the subject or that point of interest. So try to think about that when you see like a tunnel or a hallway shot or a uh, road leading off into the distance towards that vanishing point. There's almost always leading lines helping guide the viewer towards that spot. So that's the, uh, the next tip is use leading lines to guide your one point perspective.
And welcome to what is possibly the nicest staircase photo in all of Hamburg, at least in my opinion. This is the Alta Uba Postdirección spiral staircase, black and white, really beautifully balanced uh, photo, great composition. And uh, unfortunately, this place is only open during the week. It's not open on the weekend, and there's really only enough space for one photographer. So it's uh, somewhat limiting, but in regard to uh, composition in this video, it is a perfect example of a couple more rules or at least tips in regard to architecture and urban photography. So let's uh, get the camera out and see if we can get a good photo of this staircase. All right, we're up at the top of the staircase in the Alta Uva Post Direction here in Hamburg. And this is a very good example of your top-down perspective. So this is the next composition tip, and that is to look down. So especially in the case of staircases, you've got a natural kind of leading line like we just talked about, where you've got the railings kind of drawing the eye to your one-point perspective at the bottom of the staircase. And in this case, there's actually sort of a tiled pattern down at the bottom, uh, probably laid down by hand over 100 years ago when this building was built and it looks absolutely phenomenal as the subject of your one point perspective. So even though I think that this staircase definitely photographs better looking up, it's still a good example of a top down perspective. And of course, you know exactly what the next composition tip is gonna be, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, let's focus on getting the photo looking straight down. Alright, and we've made it to our next location here in this video. This is the interior of the Alta Uba Post Direction building. It's an old uh, interior courtyard actually, which would have been open to the elements years and years and years ago. But now it's got a uh, glass roof and the glass roof creates an incredible balance, a really, really beautiful uh, subject as part of your photograph. And in this case, the composition tip is to look straight up. So that is uh, one that we have uh, seen a lot in this video already, uh, but I gotta mention it because maybe you don't think about it when you're looking around the city is often that exact vertical composition looking just pointing your camera straight up straight up towards the sky in architecture and uh, and urban photography can create just unbelievable scenes and this is an exact example of that and they have a cafe and it's open on a Saturday so you can get coffee and chill out here and this will be a, a nice like sort of halfway point or break for the uh, the people that are coming here this Saturday to do the uh, first ever Hamburg city break. So this is a perfect location and we're going to get a top up shot right now. This location is also a great example of using negative space. So negative space helps draw the attention of your viewer to the subject of your photograph, but it also can balance the elements in a, uh, in a frame really, really well. And in architecture, utilizing negative space is a really powerful tool. And funny enough, it's, uh, it's somewhat tricky to do, but I find uh, that if you try and include the sky, especially the sky, it tends to uh, work really, really well in black and white and in long exposure but if you can kind of balance a big chunk of the sky against a big heavy building or something in your frame then you get a nice result and in this case we've got a really good example here of how you can utilize negative space within your frame to create sort of another element within the photo. All 
riding hello again from a wet and rainy afternoon here in Hamburg. We are now at the uh, Rathaus, it's the uh, town hall. And this is a very good example of filling the frame, which is our next uh, composition tip here. And uh, filling the frame is relatively difficult, but if you have, uh, you know, that 16 to 35, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can zoom in and fill the frame that way, or you can uh, literally get closer to your subject, walking towards the subject and trying to, uh, to fill the frame. So this is a, a really nice, well-balanced shot here in the courtyard of the uh, Rathaus. And just a beautiful building with a really, really great fountain right in front of it. Dragon kind of wrapping up the uh, the side of this uh, mermaid maybe, or, or some sort of uh, a female statue. Just gorgeous, absolutely fantastic detail and a, a great photo uh, for filling the frame with really, really nice balance as well. So even though it's a little bit wet, uh, I'm still getting a really nice result. So fill the frame if you can. Zoom in or crop in is another good uh, tip there actually with filling the frame. In post-production, you can crop in uh, to fill the frame, especially if you have a high resolution uh, sensor. So yeah, fill the frame. And as we move to our next location, I want to share with you the next idea behind composition, architecture, and urban photography, and that is finding balance and creating symmetry. Now, this is kind of a general tip for photography compositions. I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, oh man, come on, that's boring as we do that all the time. But in regard to architecture, there is still a uh, sort of a specific angle that you can take on creating symmetry and finding balance within your frame. And that is finding patterns and repetition within the architecture. And luckily for us, if you're exploring an urban environment, there are a ton of opportunities to create repetition through patterns. You've got windows, window frames, you've got floors, you've got doors, hallways, archways, all of these things that create a sort of um, what is it like a look of consistency across the uh, across the frame that pattern of all repeating things that kind of create depth even within your image so in architecture it's really important to try and find that balance within the frame and uh, traditionally in landscapes you can do that using reflections which is also possible if you've got a good reflection of a building within the city but uh, the tip for urban and architecture there is try to find repeating uh, patterns within the architecture. And that creates a really nice sense of uh, balance and symmetry in that composition. So yeah, a couple of examples here of that. And uh, we are moving on in this beautiful North German weather to our next location. And we have made it to the Scandic Emporio building. This is an exterior shot and uh, the weather has really turned on us here in Hamburg today. It's classic, super windy and kind of rainy. So uh, I actually think I'm not gonna set up here right now because I was here in the last video. If you haven't seen that, go and check it out. And we were talking all about uh, like location scout and, and looking for different locations and utilizing that app. And one of the, the reasons is because I'm gonna come here this weekend with the uh, first ever Hamburg City Break group uh, because this is such a good example of a well-balanced composition as well as a really unique uh, take on angles and odds. So that's what I'm gonna share with you right now is this idea or the rule behind angles and odds. So in photography in general, you've got like uh, the rule of thirds, which everybody knows, but that kind of piggybacks onto this idea that odd numbers are more attractive than even numbers. So that classic example of threes, triangles, also uh, five, seven, 11, nine, et cetera, et cetera, uh, seem to be kind of more well-balanced and attractive to our eye than, uh, than even numbers or, or perfectly straight lines. So one of the things that uh, I love about this is you've got some really hard diagonal lines. So not directly across the frame in like, you know, perfect 90 degree angles, but you can utilize these hard lines uh, to create really strong uh, diagonals within your image. And then also you've got incredible balance and you've got negative space here. Uh, so it's just all really a great um, composition, but the important part about this one is the, the odds and the diagonals. That's the trick.
And it is time now for the final composition idea here, and that is to simplify and minimize your subject. Anything that's in your frame that doesn't uh, help kind of draw the viewer's attention, just distracts, get rid of it. It's a classic idea with landscape photography, as a lot of you guys know. Simplifying your scene so that it's easy for the viewer to understand what the subject is, what they're looking at, and to enjoy that kind of perspective that you're looking to create. So just like in landscape and architecture, if you can simplify the, uh, the subject and simplify the composition, try and get rid of any kind of distracting elements, it helps big time. I love using black and white when it comes to uh, creating like minimalism look. If you get rid of the color, immediately it is more simple and more minimalistic. So that's a good tip there. But yeah, it's uh, 10 tips, I think, 10 ideas of composition in total, kind of all over the place. but. Uh, Definitely things to look out for when you're exploring your urban environment and looking for different architecture uh, images. There's lots of these again that cross over. You've seen many of the images that we've talked about here all kind of create the same idea of one point perspective, using leading lines to guide to that perspective, going wide, of course, shooting wide angle. You've got your top up and then the opposite of that is uh, top down, down up, top down, you know what I mean? And then of course you've got the angles and the odds and uh and yeah minimalizing and, and simplifying i'm probably missing one there but you know what i'm talking about oh, balance of course balance and symmetry you know using the uh, repetitive patterns that that goes a long way in architecture but you get the point they all kind of meld together and when you see a nice photo you know immediately you're like that's the one that's it and that's what we're looking for as photographers searching for that best composition in the best light but luckily in architecture and urban you don't necessarily need to focus on the best light but still i hope you like the video this is all in preparation for the upcoming hamburg city break which is happening this weekend so i'm going to try and make a video from uh, from that experience that's probably the one, next one on the channel here and then uh, i'm off to bolivia after that so yeah it's been fun hope you liked it crazy day here in hamburg and uh, i'll see you in the next video